but we're trying to understand the human mind, we really need to understand all the things that can go wrong with our mentality. And we all know different kinds of, uh, of psychiatric and psychological problems, but it's been very difficult to organize this in some rational pattern. We can do that with uh, various kinds of systemic illnesses when they're related to viruses or, uh, or bacteria, but mental states are harder. Uh, you've been pioneering an organizational structure. What is it and how does it work? Yeah, well, what we've started is a consortium for neuropsychiatric phenomics. Right. <clears> There's <throat> a lot of the big words. Neuropsychiatric, I think people appreciate the intersection of neurology and psychiatry, right. uh, the dealing with uh, brain disorders that may be manifest as neurologic disease or a psychiatric disease. Uh, what I think is the big innovation is phenomics. Mm -hmm. Many people have heard of genomics and all kinds of other omics, right. proteomics, uh, metabolomics, <laughs> and so forth. Uh, well, and, gen um, genomics is, is just the gene structure, what, what our genetic uh, predisposition is. That's right. And by calling it omics, it refers to studying the whole big thing, the yeah. whole megilla. Right. So studying a genomics means studying the entire genome uh -huh. at one time. Mm -hmm. And by phenomics, what we're doing is we're studying all phenotypes at the same time. And a phenotype and, is? And a phenotype is a characteristic that's associated with a genotype. So we have our genes, the instructions, the blueprint in our DNA and that's like all secret. biology. It's secret. And, but, yeah, it's it's secret. You can't see, you, you don't know what that means. Well, this, this um, uh, uh, sequence is actually the really simple part. It's only three billion base pairs of DNA strung together. Right. And so that's a one-dimensional sequence. We know the dimensionality of that. And that's right. an easy thing to study now. Right. But what's hot, hard is how does that uh, sequence of DNA yield all the other things? How does it yield proteins? How do those proteins get together to form cells? Mm -hmm. How do the cells get together to form neural circuits? And how do those neural circuits produce these things we call mind and uh, all brain functions? And, and, so, and, and then the disorders of those. That's right. So those are all the phenotypes, all the things that genes end up producing from the cellular all the way up to the highest levels of thought and right. consciousness. Right. And the disorders of those are traced typically to a very strong genetic component. So most neuropsychiatric syndromes, like schizophrenia, for example, has a very large genetic component, about 80%. Mm. So it's a good starting point to mm -hmm. try to understand a neuropsychiatric mm -hmm. syndrome mm -hmm. is drilling down to the level of the genome. Mm -hmm. But then the really hairy problem begins of trying to figure out how does the genetic anomaly or the genetic anomalies, in which there may be thousands, how does that yield the changes in all the phenotypes from the proteins through the cells up to uh, uh, cognition uh, that, that are associated with syndromes? And like do you have to go through the whole sequence or can you just go from the genotype, you know the sequence of, of, of gene, of, uh, of bases in, in the genetic structure and then just go to the, the, the psychiatric conditions? Can you do that or do you have to go through a lot of those intermediary steps? Yeah, I think this is where our work is probably its most innovative because I think that the, uh, uh, people used to think that the low hanging fruit was just to get the people's DNA, yeah. and then if they had an illness, you call that a case, and if they didn't have the illness, you call that a control. Yeah. And you just compare the cases to the controls right. and see where the DNA is different. Right. And what we're finding is that that is not yielding uh, very easy oh, answers oh, at interesting. all. Even for uh, syndromes like Huntington's disease, where there's a single genetic defect that's associated with most of the problem, right. uh, it's been really difficult. It's taken 30 years to come up with ideas about new treatments based on knowing that uh, uh, intervening biology. So what phenomics does is tries to piece together all the phenotypes that are in between the level of DNA, up through proteins, up through cells, up through neural circuits, up to cognitive functions, up to the syndromal level. So you've got to piece together all of the intervening biology between the genome and the syndrome. And that's what phenomics is all about. So how do you take one example of uh, the genomic uh, understanding and the phenomic expression at the, at the neuropsychiatric level and then describe some of those steps? Yeah, so one of the strategies that we adopted was um, to address our interest in a topic like schizophrenia mm -hmm. and bipolar disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity mm -hmm. disorder. Mm -hmm. Our thesis was there are probably shared problems in the brain across all these different kinds of high-level syndromes. What we wanted to understand is, well, at what level might they share problems? And so we focused on the level of cognition, where there are various brain functions like memory, working memory, response inhibition functions. And these are the things that we selected to focus on. The reason being that we could connect them to the high-level syndromes on the one hand, but we could also connect those kinds of things through basic research to the fundamental genetic and cellular mechanisms on the yeah. other hand. So it's what we call an intermediate phenotype. It's something that's close enough 
to the high level syndrome to make it tractable and make it understandable and be able to address those relationships, but also to the basic biology level. You have to begin by making sure that the different co uh, cognitive problems are, are have some relationship in the different types of diseases because in schizophrenia there may be different types or different kinds and so many different expressions of it and the cognition can be problem in different ways. How, how do you begin that process? I, that seems to me the most difficult part because once you can really isolate it and make sure it makes sense, then to go down to the, the, the lower level of phenotypes is, 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 is an easier task. Yeah, it, it turns out we've already got quite a bit of information about what are the cognitive problems and syndromes like schizophrenia. There's a little bit less knowledge in bipolar disorder, but um, uh, but still a decent amount. And then in what attention. So the big problems that exist in schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and ADHD include uh, memory problems and working memory problems, where working memory is a uh, subclass of memory that involves the active maintenance and manipulation of information in mind. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you can literally show the, uh, the abnormalities in that, and those abnormalities are similar in different expressions of schizophrenia? Yes, it, it looks like uh, across all the people with schizophrenia that have been studied, they tend to have problems in some um, level of, uh, of memory and working memory function, mm -hmm. the uh, inability to maintain things on mind. Mm -hmm. There are current debates about exactly what are the mechanisms of that. Is it really the capacity to maintain uh, material in mind um, or the ability to sustain activation states in the brain over mm -hmm. time? This is one of the ongoing questions. I have to tell you the story. When I was in uh, at, at Johns Hopkins Medical School and in biochemistry, the professor was talking about some, some issues and he said, we said we've we've discovered the the reason for schizophrenia because we have the schizophrenia ward at the hospital and there's a metabolite that we found in the urine that no one else had other than the schizophrenics. We tested all the control. This was it. This was the key until somebody discovered that we they served a different brand of coffee there you go. In, in that ward <laughs> and there was right. a, it was a result of the coffee. That's right. The pink spot. There was a famous pink spot that was found on some electrophoresis uh -huh. uh, experiment and that was thought to be the signature of schizophrenia for a while. Yeah. And so yeah ruling out these kind of confounds is an important problem. Right. That's one of the reasons that our work in phenomics is studying multiple syndromes at the same time. Mm. Because there may be unique characteristics associated with one syndrome or the treatment that's given to one syndrome that ends up interfering with our ability to understand right. the biology of the underlying cognitive process. Right. So let's imagine there is a working memory problem in schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and ADHD. But let's say people with schizophrenia are getting one unique kind of treatment. People with ADHD or tend to be a different age. They may be getting a different is. treatment, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Right. But by looking at the same cognitive phenotype across all these different syndromes, then it gives us more leverage on the underlying biology without confounds associated with each disorder separately. Now, it, it is not, it's not necessarily so that just because you have an expression of, 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 a, of a problem with working memory that the underlying biology is the same. I mean, because it, there could be subtle differences that it could occur in different parts of the brain or different things. How do, you, how do you really make that determination? Yeah, we try to understand what are the different possibilities and we try to drill down to isolate specific mechanisms of, uh, of sub-processes within each of these domains and then see if they really are the same across the different syndromes. And, and what have you done? Stick with working memory. Do you, do yeah. you find a, uh, a biological locus in the brain uh, uh, in terms of like hippocampus for creating memories? Uh, what, 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 where have you gotten? Yeah, well, what we know now about working memory processes is that there are lots of different systems in the right, brain right. that contribute to the overall appearance of working memory. Right. And the ones that we have focused the most on include the ability just to maintain uh, uh, activation states across widespread neural circuits in the brain. Mm -hmm. We know that's critically dependent upon uh, key frontal systems as they interact with other parts of the brain. So what appears to happen is the frontal uh, neurons projecting to all other parts of the cortex. Mm -hmm get engaged in resonant activation states. Mm. And so, so long as a behavioral program um, is underway and is proceeding without a lot of mismatch with what's coming in from the outside mm. world, mm. the brain has capacity to maintain that activation state over time. So what's your uh, prognosis uh, for the uh, uh, 
the uh, understanding of the phenomics of uh, disorders, mental disorders, uh, and relating that all the way through the system back to the genomics. Yeah. Everything we're learning is showing us that it's a lot harder than anybody thought. <laughs> um, all of the messy biology between the genetic level and these high-level syndromes is, is probably going to have to be understood in detail and mechanistically throughout this entire chain. What's exciting is that we're learning so much, not only about the whole genome, but how to represent knowledge at each of these different levels. Mm -hmm. So we're soon going to have in hand information architectures that will tell us about how could this group of genes produce this kind of change in cellular systems? How could this set of cellular changes result in changes in, in cognition? And then ultimately that will lead us, I think, to understanding these syndromes. Um, but uh, there's a lot of work that, that remains to be done. And it's all much harder than we thought and more, more complicated than people had hoped.